All right, so right now we're going to talk about the human ear and simple tests of hearing. Some of this should be review from hearing science. I'm going to talk about it a bit now and we're going to go more in depth about the anatomy and physiology of the ear when we talk about the disorders of hearing. So to begin, you should remember that the ear is divided into three parts, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Again, our outer ear, we have our pinna, our ear canal. It terminates at the tympanic membrane, or the eardrum. Then you have the middle ear space, the ossicles, the malleus, the incus, the stapes, the eustachian tube, which connects it to the nasopharynx. The inner ear is the cochlea, the auditory nerve, and the vestibular system. To make things a little bit confusing, when we measure sound, we divide the ear into two portions. We have air conduction and bone conduction. So when we test hearing, we test through the air conduction pathway by using headphones or insert earphones. And then we test the bone conduction pathway using an oscillator or a vibrator, which we put on the mastoid bone. Now, by testing two ways, we can parse out the three types of hearing loss. So we have a conductive hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss, and mixed hearing losses, which are a combination of the conductive and sensory neural hearing loss. So to review, the ear is divided into three portions. We test hearing two ways, and there are three types of hearing loss. So the outer ear, the outer ear, we have the pinna and the external auditory canal. The outer ear, it collects sound waves. If you remember from hearing science, we have compression waves that travel longitudinally. So air molecules move back and forth and back and forth very rapidly, and they push upon each other, and they send a message, a longitudinal wave, through the ear canal to the pinna. So our ears are designed to pick up sounds coming from in front of us, and they're designed to pick up sounds that are most important for our hearing, sounds in the mid frequencies, around 2,000 hertz. The outer ear terminates at the tympanic membrane, which is also known as the eardrum. This is a very thin and efficient vibrating membrane. You have the first of the middle ear bones, the malleus, embedded in the tympanic membrane. So there's a compression wave which pushes on the tympanic membrane and it starts these three bones moving. The last bone is the stapes. So the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, they move, they start this chain reaction, and the stapes pushes on the base or the bottom of the cochlea. Now the middle ear is supposed to be filled with air and it is aerated by the eustachian tube. The eustachian tube connects the middle ear to the nasopharynx, and that's why you see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Your inner ear is the third portion of your ear. In your inner ear, you have your cochlea, the snail-like shell, which is your hearing organ. It is filled with fluid. It has hair cell projections, which process the sound and are connected to the auditory nerve. The cochlea is responsible for converting waves into messages that travel from the base all the way up to the auditory cortex via the auditory nerve. The auditory nerve is also a portion of the inner ear. So every hair cell in the cochlea has an auditory nerve ending. And there are two types of auditory nerve fibers. There are afferent fibers, which bring messages up to the auditory cortex, and efferent nerve fibers, which bring messages down. Now, along the eighth auditory cortex, you have a series of way stations where sounds are processed and transferred and processed and transferred and reprocessed and shared and transferred, and this is called intrinsic redundancy. So because we have all this processing and sharing of sound, we're able to better hear speech and separate it from noise, okay? So we have the outer ear, 
the middle ear, the inner ear. This is the cochlea. These are the vestibular system, the semicircular canal, the vestibular system. The vestibular system is important for balance. It doesn't have anything to do with hearing. Now when we measure sound, we talk about conductive hearing and sensory neural hearing. So conductive hearing, sounds are processed or collected and then conducted through the ear canal to the middle ear. In the sensory neural portion of hearing, sounds are processed up to the brain. So we have the conductive pathway, which conducts the sound through the ear canal in the middle ear, and the sensory neural pathway with the cochlea and the auditory nerve. Sounds can be tested two ways. So we can test humans hearing two ways. And we do this to help us figure out if there's a problem in the outer ear, the middle ear, or the cochlea. So by testing sound two different ways, we can figure out where someone's hearing loss is. And that's, remember, part of the scope of practice of audiologists, the differential diagnosis of hearing loss. So audiologists figure out where the problem is. And to figure out where the problem is, they do two types of testing. They do air conduction testing, which tests the whole system, the outer ear, the ear canal, the middle ear, and the cochlea. And they do bone conduction testing, where a bone oscillator or vibrator is put on the temporal bone, the mastoid bone of your skull, and that vibrates the bone. Vibrating the bone vibrates the fluid of your cochlea, and then you're able to hear. So with air conduction, we have compressive waves which come in through the pinna, the ear canal. They bounce off the middle ear, and they, they stimulate the hair cells in the cochlea, which sends the message to the brain. With bone conduction, we have a vibrator, which vibrates the cochlea, moves the fluid in the cochlea, and a message is sent to the brain. So air conduction testing, we go through the outer ear, the middle ear, the inner ear, and beyond. Okay, so if you look over here, outer, the air conduction testing, let's see if my pen works. Air conduction, we go through the outer ear, the middle ear, the cochlea, and the auditory nerve. With bone conduction, we skip the outer ear and the middle ear, and we directly stimulate the cochlea, and the message gets sent to the auditory nerve, and the hearing is exactly the same. We're just stimulating the cochlea only and the auditory nerve with bone conduction. We're skipping the air pathway. So again, bone conduction skips the air conduction pathway and directly moves the fluid in the cochlea. Now by doing these two tests, we can determine whether a person has a conductive hearing loss, which is a problem in the outer ear or the middle ear, or a sensory neural hearing loss, which is a problem in the cochlea and the auditory nerve. So the two tests help us figure out if it's a conductive hearing loss or a sensory neural hearing loss. A conductive hearing loss occurs in the ear canal or the middle ear. With a conductive hearing loss, hearing by air conduction is impaired. So air conduction testing, you would wear headphones. Okay, this is the traditional, what you guys probably had in your kindergarten hearing screenings. Or maybe you have an insert earphone. And the sound waves travel through the ear canal to the middle ear, to the cochlea and the auditory nerve. But when you're testing by air conduction and a person has a conductive hearing loss, there's a problem either in the ear canal or there's a problem in the middle ear.
So there's a problem somewhere that's getting in the way of sound traveling. Maybe there's fluid in the middle ear. Remember, the middle ear is supposed to be filled with air. Or maybe there's um, debris in the, in the ear canal that's blocking the sound from getting in. So with air conduction testing, when you have a conductive hearing loss, you would get abnormal scores because of a problem either here or here. Now, when you test by bone conduction and you have a conductive hearing loss, your bone conduction scores are going to be normal. So how can that be? Well, if you remember, bone conduction directly stimulates the cochlea. And if the problem is here or here, bone conduction testing won't pick up on it. Okay? So when you have a conductive hearing loss, bone conduction scores are good. That's supposed to be a check. But air conduction scores are not good because there's a problem over here getting in the way. Okay? So a conductive hearing loss, we have a problem either here or here. When we test for a sensory neural hearing loss, the problem is somewhere over here in the cochlea or the auditory nerve. Okay, so a conductive hearing loss, we have a problem impeding the conduction of sound. With a sensory neural hearing loss, the sound waves are not processed correctly. Now, the air conduction pathway, if we were to test by air conduction and a person has a sensory neural hearing loss, the air conduction scores are going to be abnormal. And the bone conduction scores are going to be abnormal. Okay? So let's review. Where's my pen? Air conduction tests the whole system. So let's have our air conduction. Starts out here in the pinna. And if you remember, bone conduction tests just the cochlea. Alright, so with the sensory neural hearing loss, there's a problem in the cochlea. Maybe the auditory nerve, but usually the cochlea. So when I test by bone conduction, my scores are going to be abnormal. They're not going to be good, bad. And when I test by air conduction, everything's good through the ear canal, everything's good through the middle ear, and then, boop, air conduction is not good either. Okay? So when you have a sensory neural hearing loss, your air conduction scores aren't good, and your bone conduction scores aren't good either. So they're about equal. They're both equally bad. Sometimes people could have an issue where um, there's a problem in both the middle ear and the cochlea. This is called a mixed hearing loss when there's a problem in the conductive portion and in the sensory neural portion. That is a mixed hearing loss. So what sort of scores do we get with mixed hearing loss? Well, my bone conduction scores, remember bone just tests the cochlea, they're going to be bad, right, because they have this obstruction. So the bone conduction scores are going to be bad. But my air conduction scores are going to be even worse because air conduction has to go through the ear canal, the middle ear, and the cochlea. My air conduction scores have one problem and two problems. So my air conduction scores are very bad with the mixed hearing loss because they have two problems.
Bone conduction has one problem. Okay, so someone with a mixed hearing loss, there's a problem here and a problem here. So there are two problems when we're testing by air conduction and only one problem when we're testing by sensory neural, by bone conduction, okay? So that was it for the chapter. To review, your ear, let's see. You have three portions. You have an outer ear, a middle ear, and an inner ear. We have our collect sounds, helps transfer sounds to the cochlea, the cochlea and the auditory nerve process sounds. When we describe hearing loss, we talk about the conductive portion, which conducts sound through the cochlea, through to the cochlea, so you have your ear canal and your middle ear, and then you have your sensory neural portion, your cochlea and your auditory nerve that processes the sound. We test hearing two ways. We test hearing through air conduction, and we test hearing through bone conduction. Remember, air conduction tests the whole system, the ear canal, the middle ear, the cochlea, the auditory nerve. Bone conduction skips the ear canal and the middle ear and directly stimulates the cochlea. By testing hearing in two ways, we can parse out the three different types of hearing loss. The conductive hearing loss is a loss that occurs in the outer ear or the middle ear. With conductive hearing losses, you're, there's a problem over here, right? So your air conduction scores are bad, but your bone conduction scores are good. They are normal because it skips the problem. Now with the sensory neural hearing loss, let's say the problem is in the cochlea. Our bone conduction scores are going to be abnormal. And our air conduction scores are going to be just as abnormal because they're affected by the same issue. Now when we have a mixed hearing loss, we have two problems. We have a problem in the outer and middle ear, outer or middle ear and a problem in the cochlea. So your air conduction scores are doubly bad when there's a mixed hearing.